So, greetings folks, I'm Dr. Dan Critchett. I'm here with uh, Lisa Custer. Uh, Lisa is, um, I, I was gonna say anomaly, but you're uh, an extraordinary success story because she is a 10-year uh, non-transplant survivor and she's gonna share more about that. We're gonna talk about the barriers of home dialysis. And uh, there's probably a lot of misgivings, even a lot of rumors, a lot of doubts, a lot of questions. And uh, Lisa's going to try to answer some of those questions and give you, as we were talking before, motivation and what was the other one? Education. education. Yes, yes. So, so Lisa, um, what do you want to say to introduce? Because we're going to take a little field trip. We're going to go look at your supplies. You're going to give these folks a good sense for what it could mean that they would take the steps to extend their life. So what would you like to say to them? Well, I'd like to say thank you so much for listening um, to my story and my testimony. The reason that I chose home therapy is because I have not only the convenience of being able to have the treatments at home, but I can be able to take care of myself and give myself the ex access to health, my own health care, and empower myself by taking care of myself, which would equal and having a better quality of life and certainly um, a, a longer life by the fact that I have more frequent dialysis treatments more so than in the center. So I like those two things longer life and better quality of life. So for folks who are listening if you've had questions or doubts maybe there are some barriers that you've had in mind uh, you want to listen to this whole thing and watch as Lisa uh, shows what she does and uh, Lisa let me before we uh, take a field trip to your supplies let me ask you this question. Why should a person be, shall we say, take a step of courage or a step of faith and even consider home dialysis? What would you want to say to those kidney patients? I would say that if you want to be able to do dialysis on your schedule instead of someone else's schedule, having this in the safety and in the comfort of your home and being able to not only to be healthier, but to position yourself for a transplant, if that is what your um, end game would be, mm -hmm. then this is the route that you want to be able to do. You want to be able to have more frequency get yourself cleaned out and certainly if you have the ability and the means to do this you should be able to do this everybody has this opportunity to be able to uh, go to their center to go to their nephrologist and to be able to ask what other options there are other than this center mm -hmm. that should be made available to you and if that's not the case your local ESRD network that's closest to you and you've talked about what the normal typical in-center treatment is like uh, and maybe just briefly about you know leaving the house at 4 15 a.m what are what are some of the issues why a person would want to consider home as as an alternative uh, how, how how awful is it to do the the, the in-center treatment it's it's a scary place <laughs> if you you are herded in with a bunch of people in a closed area, you are at the mercy of a technician that may or may not know uh, all of the functions of their responsibilities, that may or may not practice safe health habits, uh, that may in fact, and that's where a lot of the COVID came in through the outside was to the patients who are mm -hmm. vulnerable, okay? And certainly it, it puts you in a situation where you're at the mercy of somebody and that you don't necessarily have to have uh, treatment under those conditions. You can do this yourself. You could do this if, if certified alone, depending on the state that you live. You can actually have a care partner Partner and be able to do that or you can do what is called nocturnal since there's home uh, chemo and there's peritoneal and there's two different uh, types of therapies and one therapy you can do by yourself in your sleep if you want to do that every day for 10 hours a day mm. there's a difference 10 hours a day with a tube in your stomach which is a gentler way or home hema where it cleans your blood 
and my run is three hours a day, five days a week. I can do I can do four, but I do five. Okay, and you're pointing to the machine, and we'll get a corner with that machine when we come back. So right now we'll pause, and we're going to go uh, look at your supplies. Okay. Okay. Well, here we are downstairs, and we have the medical supplies, as you can see. Now today they were supposed to show up with medical supplies, and well, sometimes they're a little bit later than so. It's a hundred degrees today in Oregon, which is really really not typical so I'm sure they're melting somewhere um, as you can see these are the sacks this is actually the solution I purify the water and so the, um, that's what you see here you see the cartridges and then of course here this is the hanging solution we do what is this called a rinse back to rinse back my blood after at the end of the treatment you have to get the blood to go back on it because if you don't put your blood back then you lose about a pint and you could possibly pass out so yeah so that's kind of a you got that and then you got your insulary you have you know you, things like this you know sponges needles and things like this now when it comes it comes once a month and it comes on a pallet and it's outside of the garage so I literally huff in all of my medical supplies and if I'm not here to do it then um, my cousin's here but we used to have a really nice guy from Canada Brad was a very nice man and he would actually come and put it in here that's when I was really sick so this is what we do with the supplies that are here in the garage and now I'll show you the supplies that are in the room okay now the supplies that are actually in the corner of the room as you can see it's ancillary we have everything from uh, the caps for my catheter because I have a catheter you've got pads you've got um, bandages of all kinds alcohol wipes you've got solution uh, sodium chloride the heparin this actually is what we put in the lines to be able to open up my catheter lines and certainly all the the various apparatuses of the tubings mask gloves scale and mind you I since I do my own labs and I do that once a month I have a spinner and we spin our own labs and then we send that out Federal Express on Monday morning and actually we had a holiday of the 4th of July and I was supposed to do labs but um, we had a little bit of a leakage problem in one of the sacks and that's going to happen too you have to check your inventory to make sure there's no leakage and sometimes when you do your security check there will be a breach and how you find out about it is there is a leak and during during your uh, treatment there is going to be water that's going to flood your floor and that's what we found out yesterday so obviously I couldn't do my lab so but sometimes things like that happen so this is what we have like I said is the insulary type of, um, of supplies and over here by my machine we have shall I say my go-to cart this card is on wheels, okay? It has what we call the on and off pack, okay? When we get on and then we get off the supplies that are ready and I'm gonna be doing a nocturnal treatment one in the morning uh, when my care partner comes back from home from work and we're gonna do that later on today since we missed um, today's uh, earlier uh, issue because of the flood. So, um, but this is again, when you have these supplies, it can be really overwhelming. All you have to do is remember, what do I need today? What do I need for the remainder of the week? And what do I need to be put inside the house? So uh, bugs and, you know, it's a, a safety issue and what needs to be in the um, the garage, which is your larger supplies. Okay, Lisa, thank you for that uh, field trip, a little yeah. tour to your supplies. Help people maybe see it's practical, it's realistic, and once you get accustomed to it, it's not difficult every day to get through it. No, so, it, yeah. it really it really isn't. It it I think it's because of the fact that there's not too many of us that have done it. Mm -hmm because most people who do home go right into transplantation they're on the mm -hmm. tran waiting list yeah yeah and and this is kind of 
that used to be seen as their last hope when in fact it should be now they're changing it where it's the first stop so after they have their crash moment mm -hmm. they go right into home okay and so what is happening is there is a big emphasis of nef uh, nephrology uh, nurses in that nephrology area and nephrologists in general is in such a high demand now it's just incredible there's actually over 30 million people who have ckd stage three and four that don't even know it oh really 30 million 30 million well we've done the tour now we're in the this is where you sit for the three hours Absolutely. and uh, tell us about that what i do every day oh, i have to i have to weigh myself i've got to weigh myself i've got to do my blood pressure and i i've got these handy things right here and because we're hooked up till i should say houston i have an ipad and the ipad goes directly to my center the machine everything's all hooked up and we synchronize it with my phone actually as far mm -hmm. as uh, connecting it and um, what we do is like I said this is a next stage machine and this next stage machine the top portion is the actual cycler the bottom portion is what is the pure flow pure flow is a water purification system the lines that you could see on the floor on the back that goes into the laundry room the water is on continuously because of the fact that the water has to maintain a certain temperature otherwise it would literally could freeze my um, freeze my heart mm. because I have a catheter and it goes right to my heart most people don't have catheters they have it in lines that that are in their arms or possibly their thigh but I have vascular access issues mm. Anything else you want to say about, uh, now you sit in this chair, now you self-regulate, right? I mean, you, yes, you, I do. you plan your schedule and you are in the chair for three hours. I'm in the chair for three hours. And how many days a week? I do this uh, five days a week. My okay. doctor actually literally said I could uh, get away with four, but we've noticed with the increase, I'm, I believe I'm at... Uh, 25 kilos which was an increase of um, the amount of water and with the increase of water did not increase the time of my chair time now chair time is three hours but then you have to prep and you have to clean your catheter and then you have to flush out the lines as far as in terms of the heparin and stuff so you're looking at about 30 minutes of prep time from beforehand and because I do have a catheter, it's a matter of rinse back. After the rinse back, which is a, a one minute process, then it's um, clamp, clamp, and disconnect. And it, I, it's not like pulling mm -hmm. needles out of you. So that's, it's, it's a quicker, you know, I, get, I can get off in 10 minutes. So it sounds a little bit, because I'm not in this space, mm -hmm. I'm not a patient. Uh, but it sounds like it could be a little complicated, but you have learned it a step at a time, so it's just routine. Well, absolutely. You, you know, I had, I, I, you know, I had the thorough training, mm -hmm. and uh, because I've had uh, two different care partners, my first care partner was my former husband, and he had passed away during COVID, and that left me in respite care. And then my cousin stepped forward, and though he works full time, he was willing to be a care partner, and we've been doing that for the last two two years and so if you if you, if you manage your it's really managing your day okay you know you have to do this five days a week and so it's a matter of okay when is it a good time to do this and because I have a relationship with a care partner I have to work with him on when he can do this because he has a job now that's very unusual because most people that do home hemo usually someone is retired or a homemaker or you know they're home all day they, they're home all day much. they're retired yeah. right. right right and so that's a very different kind of dynamic mm -hmm. than when you're still trying to earn you know money you know you know we have to you know we have to do that unfortunately but um, it the wonderful thing about this is that I can watch TV 
if, if, if you know, I've got the TV going, I can, um, I'm an advocate, I can do my advocacy work. The one problem is, is that because I have a catheter, sometimes the catheter moves in my body and I have to say, sit a certain way and not move at all. And I mean, not move your head, not, mm -hmm. and that's typical even in a in the dialysis unit. But it makes more sense to be at home. And and this has been a, a myth about having pets. You can have pets, okay, but when you are going on and off the machine, the pet has to be out of the room mm -hmm. because and people who are here have to be masked. And half, and if you're near me, you have to be masked and gloved during the treatment. Absolutely. Okay. If you if you just happen to come see me to just visit me and just mm -hmm. sit over there, mm -hmm. you would have to have a mask. Okay. Okay. So a couple things to finish up, and you were kind of dipping into it a little bit. Uh, what can you do with home dialysis that a person can't do when they're in center? You you can have a life. You can be able to. Be, if, if you could work part time, I, I am able to work part time. I also uh, am on the praise and worship team at my church, so I'm singing every Sunday, and I'm required to do things that would, you know, I mean, I need to be uh, fully attentive. I can't be in my bed cramping or, you know, in the bathroom stuck all day being sick and I have a better quality of life and I'm healthier and though I'm not on a transplant list because uh, being Native American Indian culturally that's kind of not where my head's at and so in order to maintain my uh, health I'm going this route because I feel better, I look better, I have more energy and if I do want to have a transplant I will have positioned myself in such a manner that I would be easily accepted and I would get one if that, mm -hmm. if so be the case, if that's the way things should be, yes. Yeah. And so it's, but it's, but it's also, like I said, the most important thing is you're not tied to the center. Mm -hmm. The kidney patients. More choices. There's no, there's no choice. Yeah. It's death. I mean, you have more choices doing home dialysis. You do, you do. There, yeah. you have not only that, but you're in the comfort of your own home. I mean, I can, you know, be where I want to be. I can look at my dog. I, you know, can look at just. I, I can be where I want to be. I do not want to be in um, with strangers that are in the process of dying who have mental. Mm -hmm duress and stress I've seen people yank their their um, needles out I've seen you know people have died next to me and you know how I emotionally have taken it I'm, I mean I'm praying for them for them to be able to overcome whatever crisis they're going and I, but I've seen so much death and misery and despair then I knew there's a better way to live. And you don't have to see all that. You know people are still suffering and still dying, but Absolutely. you don't have to be in the midst of not, it. So. Not, not at all. Yeah. I, everybody that I have known in the center, they have all passed away mm. except two transplanted people. Yeah. And it's uh, it, we don't live very long, but I'm going on my 10th year, mm. and for someone to survive this long, and not just survive, but I've been thriving. Mm. That I, yeah. I, I, I don't, if you had seen how I was in the center versus how I am today mm -hmm. and what I'm doing and how much I'm contributing and able to contribute back there, it's a clear, is clear as all day mm -hmm. that home therapy is working for Lisa. That sets up a perfect closing. And that is, I'd like you to talk, look at the camera and talk to a person that's watching this and wondering 
is this the right thing for me or can I do it? I know there are barriers. You know, what am I going to do? I'm kind of afraid and uh, so many questions. Just look at the camera and tell them, you, you know, uh, uh, from your story, we did the field trip and everything else. Persuade them that it's worth taking the risk. It's worth having the courage to step out and do that. As a kidney patient, a stage five kidney patient, that's between here and death, I can honestly say that home therapy has not only kept me alive, but I have thrived and I have absolutely blossomed. I have learned more about how to be vigilant in taking not only taking care of myself physically, but how to take care of myself in terms of my mental well-being and all of this, all of this would not be possible if it was not for my faith. Because if I have not had my faith, uh, the rock, I don't know how this would have fared. I, I, I don't think I would be alive. Mm. In fact, I know I wouldn't. I have received the best possible quality care and the best possible training to be able to not only do this every day, but do this year after year. And I'm still in the game. Mm. I'm going on 60 years old and I've gone through this for 10 years. And uh, I I'm perfectly, perfectly happy. If I have to do this for the rest of my life, however long it'll be, I'm okay with that. Now, will I change my mind? Maybe. But you know, I will position myself to be able to have the choice and to have the option. When you're in the center, you're in the center and you stay in the center and sometimes you die in the center mm -hmm. and so no i don't think that's a very um for me a very conducive environment i am a happy person i'm a positive person i'm a motivated person i wake up every day and it's the you know five four three two one i'm out of bed i weigh myself i come down here i prep i i have a very stringent schedule I have a very stringent diet. I know I weigh my food. I weigh the liquids. Okay? It it's it's and you know if it's toxic, I have nothing to do with it. That includes the media. I censor what I read, what I watch, what I eat, what I do. And I'm t I, I, it, it, not, it actually prevents a lot of pitfalls that we have in this life and that goes well beyond being a kidney patient. So Lisa, I just want to wrap up by saying it's not easy for a lot of people to get in front of a camera and tell the story and tell some things. But you have done it partly because you're more accustomed to it, but also because you care about the person that's watching. Yes. You want to give them choices, give them tools. What we were wanting to do, as we mentioned from the beginning, to give information information and motivation and hope absolutely and, uh, and you've done that I, yeah. and and you know and I, I did not have that yeah nobody nobody really came to my help to, to, to figure this out I mean they just basically threw information at me and this is where you the health lit, uh, health literacy literacy in general is the predictor for your health mm. if you can't yeah. read and write and comprehend this is going to be a, a more of a barrier mm -hmm. than perhaps what it should be but if you can read write comprehend and you are mobile and you have the physical ability then do this do this because you'll be you'll feel better mm -hmm. and you will be happier that's a good close thank you that's a good way to wrap it up dr dan critchett here with 10-year non-transplant kidney patient survivor lisa custer we hope it's been helpful for you